Today I'll show you how to edit this clip from Magnates Media. How does a boy born into poverty become the richest man in the world? Andrew Carnegie is the personification of the American dream. I'll try and slow down because a few of you mentioned I'm going through it too fast, so I'll slow the pacing and have some pauses in between so you can see everything I'm showing you. Using this building rubble image with the boy and teddy bear which can be found on Adobe Stock, I duplicate this layer and using the roto brush tool I mask out the shadow of the boy. You could also mask it out in Photoshop beforehand if you want, either way works. And if you aren't very familiar with the roto brush tool, it's great for masking out objects and videos as well as images. I apply the motion tile effect and tick mirror edges to the original building image and play around with the settings until I'm happy with it. Then I add an optics compensation with reverse lens distortion ticked. Then I add CC Lens and Brightness Contrast effects and adjust those settings. For this building layer I add scale keyframes to make it zoom in quickly at the beginning and slowly zoom in further. Then holding down the Alt key and clicking on the position keyframe I add the expression wiggle 2,30. The first number is the speed or frequency and the second number is how wide or the size of the distance it shakes. So basically I want it to be a slow wiggle that doesn't shake fast but I want it to slide around the screen at a noticeable distance. Now here's something I'll show you that you will probably end up using a lot. You can parent link as many layers to the layer that has the wiggle expression or to a null object with the expression so that all layers will wiggle with it kind of like the wiggles. And if you already have the layers parented to other ones like I have here, then you can parent link just the position transform property. So play around with these and get used to the wiggle expression, parents linking layers or individual properties. The more you get used to these, the easier it'll be to create complex animations. For the first line of text, I create an aerial bold font, then go to animate skew and skew it a little bit. However, I don't animate this with keyframes. Then I go to animate again and select opacity. Set the opacity to zero and under the range selector I keyframe the start property at 0%, then the second keyframe at 100%. This will animate the text making each letter appear from left to right using the opacity property. I then add a glow effect to this text layer and set the colors to orange and play around with the settings until I have this small fuzzy orange glow around the letters. Then to create the light orange to dark orange gradient, I draw two boxes around each sentence as separate shape layers. I then parent these to the text layer and then add the set matte effect and set the take matte from layer drop down option to the text layer. Then I select this shape layer and go to layer at the top and select layer styles and then gradient overlay. This will add the effect controls to the layer properties and you can change the colors if you click on edit gradient. So for this one I select light orange on the left marker and dark orange on the right marker. Then switch the style to reflected. I can then copy and paste this onto the second shape layer so now I have this gradient effect over both sentences. The next text layers is done exactly the same as the method I just showed except for one thing. I've had to make the second sentence or the word poverty on its own text layer because it uses a different animation to the born into sentence or layer. As you can see the top sentence uses the same opacity animator effect however the poverty word each letter rotates into view around its own anchor point. For this animation you need to go to animate and select enable per character 3D. You will then see two tiny cube pictures in the 3D layer toggle. Then add the same opacity animator with the same settings as the other text layers and then add the property rotation as a second animation. This will bring up the X, Y and Z rotations as separate properties. We want to change the Y rotation and can even add keyframes. I've added two keyframes which are set just one frame inside the keyframes above and set the first one to 200 degrees and the second keyframe to 90 degrees. You don't have to use these exact values but play around with them you will find that if you set them too high the letters will start to flip the other way. 
Make sure all these text and gradient shape layers are positioned below the boy layer so the text appears behind them. I also add the same wiggle expression to these text layers, so wiggle 2, 30, and parent link just the scale property to the building. Then I add a yellow sparks overlay set to screen mode on top and parent link it to the building and have motion blur enabled for these layers. You don't need to add a wiggle to the overlay, I've put a short blur animation at the beginning of the overlay which makes it come into focus. Then I add an adjustment layer to go on top with blur, exposure and brightness effects applied. The beginning has brightness keyframes and the end of the scene has all of these effects keyframed to go up in values which basically creates a dip to white transition and then I turn the values down again to transition into the next scene. You don't need to copy these, you can use adjustment layers and add random effects like this and play around with them to create your own versions. For the next scene I have this man in a suit picture with scaling up keyframes and then I've added a wiggle 2,30 expression. I've also added brightness and contrast to some of these images. Next I've created two shape layers using the pen tool and draw in rough rectangles where one of their edges has a jagged paper tear look drawn. Then I apply the roughen edges effect and play around with the settings. Then I add two evolution keyframes to animate each of the edges. I also keyframe their positions to make them slide outwards from the middle and then I hide the solid layer used to see it and pre-compose this layer. I add a foggy smoke layer and parent link it to the man in suit layer and set the track mat to the pre-composed paper tear layer I just created. And then add a city skyline image at the bottom of all these and parent link it to the man in the suit layer. The skyline also has a couple of rotation keyframes. Then I've added a money falling stock footage found on YouTube and using the key light effect I've removed the green screen background. All of these layers have had some basic brightness and contrast or saturation corrections done on them. For the next scene I've added four money or currency note images found on Wikipedia and resized and positioned them to match the ones on Magnates Media's clip. The $50 bill has some colour correction and glow added to it. All these notes don't have any keyframe or animation animations added. Then I add an adjustment layer with a rough circle mask set to add drawn on it with a glow effect added. I then keyframe the position and glow intensity to match the Magnates Media clip. Another trick or keyboard shortcut you should get used to doing is cutting all these layers to the correct start and finish positions on the timeline. See how the layers don't take up the entire timeline, they are staggered to start and stop depending on when they actually appear in the edit or preview window. If you hold down the alt key and press the close bracket key on your keyboard this will trim the layer to where your marker is on the timeline. This is very useful especially if you're used to using Premiere Pro where you can put clips side by side. In After Effects you can't have them side by side and it starts to look very messy and confusing. So using this trick you can make the timeline look more organised. You can even move all the layers in one scene and group them directly above each other. For example on this timeline I have all the first scene layers at the bottom and the next scene above it and so forth. So without having to read the layer names you can look at the timeline and zoom into a particular scene's layers. Next I have a new adjustment layer with keyframes added for a blur and glow threshold radius and intensity city properties. Then I add the photo of Andrew Carnegie and enable 3D then add scale, X and Y rotation keyframes. I've also applied a wiggle 2, 20 expression which most of the other layers in the scene will be parented to. I've added factory smoke footage at the bottom and parented it to Andrew Carnegie. Then above that layer is the text layer which has an orange fill and a glow around it. This text layer doesn't have any gradient overlays or animations. I also parent this to the Andrew Carnegie photo so it wiggles with it. Underneath the factory smoke I've added a gray solid layer with a gradient ramp applied to make the center light grey and the corners a dark grey. I've also added a motion tile effect with mirror edges and parented it to wiggle with the Andrew Carnegie photo. The motion tile effect helps fill outside the edges of the solid layer when it scales down in size from the parent link. Next I add footage of the American flag blowing in the wind. Then I draw a rough shape where one of the edges is slightly jagged and then I keyframe a rough in edges evolution property, similar to the paper tear animation from the scene before. I then animate the position of this shape layer to move from top to bottom. Next I'll duplicate this layer and move the copy beneath the Andrew Carnegie photo layer, but above the text and chimney smoke layers. 
I will add a fast box blur to this layer so it removes the black outline that will be seen when I overlay the layers above it. Next I set the flags track mat to the original shape layer that's above it. Both the flag and shape layer need to be above the Andrew Carnegie photo layer. I then set the flag blend mode to overlay. This is how we create the flag revealing from top to bottom and overlays Andrew Carnegie. The shape layer copy beneath Andrew is what stops the overlay from going over the text and other background assets. Above all these layers I add a smoke footage asset and duplicate it. And using the key light effect I get rid of the green screen background. I then keyframe both the scale and position properties of these two smoke layers to come into view from the side and scale down into view. The scene then finishes with a Gaussian blur keyframed on a new adjustment layer. And here's the finished version I created. How does a boy born into poverty become the richest man in the world? Andrew Carnegie is the personification of the American dream. Let me know if the pacing of this video was better or if you need me to slow down even more. Going forward I'll try and do longer tutorials when I have the time and in between I might do some shorter ones just to stay consistent with uploading since the longer ones do take a lot longer. Thanks for watching, see you next time.